She's got such a great voice, hasn't she? Um, welcome everybody to uh, another conversation hosted by Heart Community Group. Um, and today we are delighted and honored uh, to be having a conversation with John Doyle. And uh, I think most of you have read his bio uh, or know of him, um, but we'll be asking John about all sorts of things. But this comes in a series of conversations we're having, which we've called Living Well Now, Knowing What We Know. How can we live well now? So John, welcome, delighted to see you. Absolutely thrilled to have been invited and a big fan of the, uh, of the, of the group. Hello, Bernhard. Hello, Jane. Um, so yeah, gosh, where to start? Um, I'm sure we could easily have a, a five hour conversation, but let's start with um, what, are you, what are you doing now? What's your, what's your kind of day job now, just briefly? Day job is um, uh, not, uh, not hugely different than I've done for quite some years. I, I work in uh, the European Commission, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I work in DG Connect, which is kind of the high tech uh, area. Uh, I work on, uh, on our relationships with what we call third countries or overseas countries. So I'm in particular uh, responsible for our um, e-commerce, information technology, artificial intelligence, all that kind of stuff, relationships with Canada, the EEA, microstates in Europe, um, and um, Switzerland, as well as the, I, I also look after the Arctic and the Antarctic. I also do quite, you know, a reasonable amount of, uh, of kind of straightforward kind of bureaucracy type stuff. So I assemble reports from our various uh, delegations around the world, put them into kind of an, uh, ma management reports for our management team. Um, so that's that's kind of the official day job. But, you know, I've, I, the, the commission is a curious organization. <clears throat> in that it, it, it's very unusual as, as a public sector organization in that it has this right of initiative. Now, it's not always exercised maybe as much as it should be, but the idea behind the European Commission was that somebody in, in this European constellation, somebody should be responsible for taking initiative. So uh, some, somebody should come up with the ideas. So above all else, the European Commission, I think is quite unique, unique even historically in that it is the right, duty, obligation and privilege to take the initiative to come up with the ideas to sort of say, wouldn't it be good if? Now, at that point, the member states and the European Parliament say, nah, or yes. You know, so some of the ideas they'll take, some of the ideas they won't take. Um, so. You know, people often ask me how I'm still employed. Um, the, the, um, <laughs> that was, my, was going to be one of my questions. Later. A of mine used to say, I'd love to say you're a useful idiot, but I'm not sure about the useful. Um, so um, the, um, the, 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 um, the thing is that when I first came here, I came as an external and I was, I was, I was stunned way, way back in the early 90s. I was stunned by by the existence of this feeling that you know you could take initiative somebody who had an idea could kind of go do you know what we should do uh, I, you know wherever i went people would say you know and, and i am a kind of a creative sort of a person so ideas would kind of come flowing people would say, God, that's a great idea let's let's bring it to the boss and oh this is a good idea why don't we try this now, there's lots of silly ideas as well like harmonizing number plates on cars why <laughs> Okay, maybe not. Yeah. Um, well, whereas, you know, sort of nationalizing, if that's the right word, of the coal and steel resources that the French and the Germans spent kind of two centuries beating the crap out of each other over. Well, that's a pretty good idea. You know, if everybody owns it, we can't fight over it kind of thing. So, so um, it was back in about 2003 to 2004 that I suddenly realized what was happening uh, with the climate change thing. I had been seconded to this special, special task force um, that was supposed to implement what we call at the time the Lisbon strategy. And this Lisbon strategy was the notion of making Europe the most competitive knowledge-based economy in the world by a given date. And, uh, uh, you know, we had country responsibilities and, uh, and, and thematic responsibilities. And, and, you know, and I found it like, quite quick at my job, you know, and I'm fairly sharp, you know, and suddenly found myself bored, you know, so, okay. What do I do now, you know? Um, wandered down the corridor and there were 
two men and a dog. In fact, it was actually two ladies, two, two, two wonderful ladies, writing the first ever sustainable development strategy. And at the time, I was just an arrogant, ignorant engineer. And I was like, what the fuck is a sustainable development strategy? What are you two talking about? What? Like, um, oh, you mean limits? What? Club of what? Wrong? I mean, I had no idea. I often say to people, I walked into that room and started talking to them, and I've never walked out. So that's 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 kind of my story. Right, right. So that I, that was roughly speaking 16 years ago, and I just went holy shit and everything else just fell by the wayside and said this is what i will do now there's been all sorts of things that happened in between but basically that's the story so would you now describe yourself uh, I mean, we call it collapse aware and yeah. I know, is that what you'd call it or would you have a different name for it i i, I like collapse aware I'm, I'm probably one step i may, maybe i'm one step more uh, 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 pessimistic is the wrong is the wrong word, but I'm, I'm I would be virtually certain that there will be no humans on the planet within 15 years. So what does that? I, I don't know what that makes me. Um, uh, mortality aware. N T A G. I think. Yes. What's that? Near What's term. NTAG? Near term human extinction. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. I. I. I it, that, that's probably more where I fit. Um. It's it's uh, it's an interesting one that because I remember watching my friend Beryl uh, Spiritchek interviewing um, um, Guy McPherson yeah. or, or or maybe it was somebody else was talking to Guy and he was sort of saying well when my grandmother died at the age of fourteen I suddenly realised my mortality but being of Irish Catholic stock maybe I mean I I, I think I realised my mortality about ten years earlier I think I was four or five and was terrified of hell and heaven and so on I mean a lot of my struggle has been to enjoy the life that I've been given I, I've, I've never been remotely terrified of death it's always been there. You know, I've had an inverse struggle to to if you're like, wow, it's like fucking great, you know, um, you know, so 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 I'm almost on, a, on an opposite trajectory to a lot of well, I don't know if I'm on an opposite trajectory. I, I suspect I'm not alone in, in, in carrying those kinds of dark, dark and heavy weights. Um, but um, so so for me, it's it's a question of I think maybe first of all, psychologically. I, you know, maybe I'm that way inclined, but I'm also very technical. I'm an engineer, I'm a scientist and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, I can do, I can do Hamiltonians if you, you know, in, in terms of um, uh, if, if you want to go, go completely crazy, but I can, um, I, I can certainly do addition and I can certainly do exponential functions. And um, uh, uh, those things don't lie to me uh, when uh, kind of, well, if that, uh, um, you know, so yeah. I, I, I now that's I, I, I kind of ins I kind of insist with people on on facing that um, all the time with this little um, what, what Alan Watts often refers to as the hint of the, the little thought in the back of your mind that were we to actually um, um, I don't know crack something well then who knows but yeah. the cracking of the something is contingent upon accepting the way it actually is yes. i know that's yeah. that seems vaguely circular but yes. that's, no, I know. I, I know. that's kind I, of where I my agree. head is at yeah i yeah. agree i agree mm. thank you so mm. what i always uh, i can only imagine but how mm. how have your views your take on our yeah. kind of interconnected predicaments how how does that tend to go down with others in the european commission well, well, it it doesn't. Um, uh, it, it's, uh, you, you, I mean, I think you know yourselves. You, you probably find yourself sitting on, um, you know, on on Long John Silver's treasure chest, and you sort of say, "Hey, come here," you know. And people are going, yeah, "Whatever," you know. It's, it's so so the the joy is in actually finding one or two people. The joy is in a meeting like this. The joy is in sort of saying, "No, you never know. Um, something might happen." You know, from from here with with, with the wonderful people from Heart, and. And I think that's the. Um, uh, I think that's one of the reasons myself and the chap, the chap who was most affected by your, um, uh, you know, by your uh, what I call it, topology, I suppose, uh, uh, for for understanding, was an ex director general of our director general for fisheries. I mean, he was he's a wonderful, wonderful man, Bernard Fries. And he just said to me, why didn't we know this? And he was part of this kind of underground thing, but 
on the ground, unofficial thing that we were doing, calling occasional strike days and getting things, you know, all sorts of things happen. But the, the truth is that what we're probably, um, what, 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 What's happening is something much more akin to, I think, your main profession of, of, you know, therapeutic work is people don't see it. They can't see it. It's not there. If I say it and, and it's not a conscious thing, it's not something you turn away from. It's just it's not there. People start saying, oh, it's about time they fix it. You know, you have a really in-depth discussion with somebody. And then somebody starts saying, yeah, it's about time they got a handle on this climate change stuff. Now, anyway, about artificial intelligence. Okay, it's it's um, so so I mean I can be it's very funny because this morning I had a had a really <laughs> sort of a vaguely interesting and vaguely pe people are very patient with me which 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 I, which I much appreciate because they need to be but this morning we had we had we have a big survey going on about the artificial intelligence landscape in three very important third countries for us Canada. Japan, Australia. I happen to be responsible for our relationships with the Australians and the Canadians. And so this big study going on and all sorts of, you know, so this big Zoom meeting and, oh, here's the topology and we're interested in this and the Japanese ministry is doing that, the Canadian. And I was thinking I'm going to last about five minutes in this, but they were, they were really nice people. So at one stage, you know, I asked the question, you know, I sort of always ask one, um, um, you know, how, how about the real world? This is kind of, uh, oh shit, one of them. And you can see people going, oh, can we, we, you know, do something, somebody, you know, <laughs> get rid of this guy. Oh, but then, just, just let us stay in the metaverse. Yeah, stay st in the metaverse. Yeah, but, and, but it's fascinating because the discussion we had was wonderful. And they've all contacted me now in the last little while and sort of said, you know, John, can we keep talking about this? Because like, it's, it's, it's really difficult. I said, are, you know, AI and, and the sort of said, well, we're looking at ways we can reduce the energy consumption of AI. <laughs> okay. We're looking at the way artificial intelligence systems can optimize the way we arrange arrays of windmills. Okay. And I said, well, this, this is really mean, but I do this a lot. And I sort of say, um, um, if I took all the ideas about using our technologies, you know, information technology, all of them together, right? And I put them against just one initiative in terms of, you know, doing something for the planet. And that one initiative would be turn off the fucking internet. Boom. I said, how does this stack up, right? And the, everyone went, bastard. <laughs> You can see people, but still they engaged uh, and, yeah. and still we sort of said you know let's try and keep talking up <laughs> I have no idea how far my hierarchy will let me go with this and there was some sharp words exchanged afterwards but sharp words I'm used to but it was just the whole the whole interest of the thing is um uh how do you know, can we how far can we let ourselves go and you can see people wanting to go and you see people you know i've got to pay the rent and i mean i'm extremely lucky like i said because of the extraordinary almost um, schizophrenic nature of the commission thou shall take initiative but you are also a public sector organization like how does that work well just live with schizophrenia it's it's easy um but it's not so easy for other people you know there, there are kids to be fed there are jobs to be held down so so yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean that's 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 kind of um yeah yeah i yeah. forget what the question was but you know, I just, uh, yeah. just um so so tell us something about mm -hmm. your your kind of emotional slash spiritual slash psychological journey with all of this something obviously that we yeah. are we're very engaged with supporting people in um, yeah yeah um I, I think i think in many ways this i mean this is the challenge um i mean wh wh when you spend enough time in this space you're inevitably drawn to anybody else who has spent any time in this space um and and, and you get lucky well I, I certainly got lucky and and my gaze turned a little bit more towards the east 
because I find uh, uh, you know, um, our Western mythologies, for mythologies they are, um, uh, the things that help us go, they're, they're all kind of creationists. You know, God made us, you know, uh, he molded us out of clay and he zapped a little bit of spirit in there. Now here's the earth, be very good and eternity will be fantastic. Um, and, and that's, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic mythology, I think, for kind of um, uh, uh, practical um, uh, um, kind of people. Okay, roll up your sleeves, sweat of the brow and all that, you know, make stuff, do stuff, it's all good. It's, a, it's, literally, a, a, it's literally an arts and crafts mentality. He crafted us, keep, art, keep arting, keep crafting. The, the East points you towards something completely different um, uh, or, or begins to open up that perspective. I'm a big fan of people like Alan Watts and, uh, and so on and so forth. I'm fascinated with uh, DT Suzuki on, on this thing. I can't believe somebody can actually write an entire book about the tea ceremony and I'm reading it. And I'm, you know, like, how, like, how can you write an entire book about pouring a cup of tea? You know, well, to be honest, it's better than talking about artificial intelligence. But anyway, um, so, so for me, a big moment came at the beginning of the of the um, uh, the COVID crisis, and, and I covered it. I won't go into this in too much detail because if you want to follow it, I I, I do two Zoom thingies uh, on YouTube with uh, with um, uh, dear old uh, uh, Stuart Scott about this. He interviewed me right at the beginning of this, and I was literally, you know trying really hard to get fired again because I, I ran this thing we called it the limited list email list had about 300 people on it this was the kind of the agit the people agitating and so on and so and I'm, i was kind of sitting there pounding on the keyboard saying and furthermore you know uh, um, and this will not happen through people sending emails and, and and then i said so what am i doing sending emails and i just i literally said so I kind of finished with therefore this is my last email hit the return button and just stopped um, and, and what's happened since to me has been, uh, uh, first and foremost, I've, in, I've, I've immensely enjoyed and stuck at home. I'm hugely privileged. Uh, you know, I earn enough money, so I live in a lovely house. There's enough rooms around here so that four grown kids can come back when they need to with boyfriends and girlfriends. This is a teleworking center, you know? Um, uh, but, um, it's been it's been a it's been it's been a total. At the same time, I started, uh, or I, I, I yeah, I started in earnest. I started therapy with a wonderful lady called uh, uh, called Monica, and she's into this. Uh, what's it called? Um, um, it's a guy called Fagioli. It's um, it's uh, psychosynthesis. Yes, yes. <laughs> and she's a sort of kind of a, a follow on from Freud, Jung, Adler and the others kind of really kind of synthesizing who you are, who you were, who you want to be. And, and I find there I find there rails that I can hold on to mechanisms that work for me. I, I find, um, you know, getting to those childhood traumas, understanding my relationships with others, even those close to me. So uh, I, I, I and I find myself increasingly in this um in this kind of uh, immediacy uh, it would be a little bit wrong to kind of be as pretentious enough to say living in the moment but like i find myself uh, in the in the immediate presence of what is and what isn't <laughs> a lot uh and uh, I, I say, I'm, I, and I'm also privileged to be able to say it like it is. Um, I've, I've thought a lot about whether I should say what I'm going to say next, um, but I'll say it anyway. As you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rather energetic and, and funny and so on and so forth. And I had, um, I had, uh, um, but I thought I, I went, I, I went walking in the Pyrenees about six months ago and I was leading everybody and bounding up mountains and so on and so forth. And, um, and then I went to Ireland a couple of months ago and we tried to climb a little hill in Wicklow and I couldn't. And we thought, oh, he's got COVID, but I didn't have COVID. So I did a bunch of tests in hospital um, oh, last week. Um, well, and that was last week, yeah, end of last week. Everything's great, you know, lung capacity of a whale and you know, all my bloods are fantastic, absolutely brilliant. And then they sent me for an ultrasound and I sort of said, I'm pretty sure I'm not pregnant, but carry on, you know, far be it from me to tell you your job. Um, but they, it, it, they got, it turns out I have a problem with my heart. 
what? You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm a bloody vegan. I can't have a problem with my heart. You crazy? And, and so I, and I, I'm saying this now because it's the top left uh, branch or thingy, right? That's blocked. And I have to go in in a couple of weeks' time where they'll stick in dye and they'll figure out what's why. And then if I'm lucky, they'll just be able to knock out a little thingy or they might need to put in a stent or I might even be luckier. It might just be some electrical problem or I might be less lucky. But I wanted to share that now because I have no idea. Yeah. It would mean something much less, I think, if I shared it when I know what the story is. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so, um, in ways, I kind of feel, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where something dreadful has happened to you. And I'm not saying this is dreadful. And suddenly it seems as if everybody else in the world has kind of gone into a strange kind of soundproof room or something and everything kind of goes whoom, whoom, whoom. And time is passing at a different rate for you. You know, and you're, so what the fuck has nobody, does nobody, has... now that's kind of, I think, where I'm spending a lot of my time not just since this, um, not just since the, the diagnosis uh, or the identification of a problem diagnosis yet to come, but in, in a kind of a state where everything, the state has its own absolute intrinsic and, uh, and um, unavoidable value. Um, it, it, it's almost in, in, in quantum mechanical theory terms, it's when, it's when, you have a wave and it hasn't gone through either slit. Yes. There's no particle yet. So can you live with the world being a wave or do you have to wait till somebody says black, white, yes. went through this slit or that slit? Yeah. And, and I think if, if I could say anything about, about how I feel about, you know, over the last two years and, and my, because I said the, the previous 12 years were basically telling, you know, getting very close to being fired and annoying people by telling them they were bloody idiots and the world was going to die. The last two years have been more informed by uh, a sense of this, this kind of, uh, this kind of slightly, <laughs> slightly muffled throb of reality, which, uh, and, and non-reality, whatever it is, seems to me to be hyper-present to me. Yes, uh, yes, but, yes. Uh, yeah. you, 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 you can analyze me afterwards. I'll, I'll even pay you. you know, it's a, but you know, I'm not sure there's enough money in the world, but I, you know. <laughs> so, um, no, I'd love, to, I'd, I'd love to follow that up with you. Uh, but what is it, Basil Fawlty says, uh, remember, remember all, this, all the psychiatrists were having a convention in Fawlty Towers at one stage, and one of the guys goes, there's enough work here to keep the rest of us, to keep us in yeah. employment for 50 there's years. A, anyway. There's an entire conference. But that's it, yep. <laughs> Brilliant, okay. Um, thank you. So, Kate, do you want to ask your question about... Um, about heart and and yeah however you want to phrase that yeah sure i mean obviously john you've been doing a lot of thinking about all of this for a very long time actually no i need to i need to stop you right there sorry this is um, because a big part of it is not thinking uh for me for the last two years yes i i can i can do i have done a lot of thinking and, and you know i could i could bore the pants off you with exponentials but one of the things that came across in my in my in my research <laughs> um, was the whole the whole somatic thing uh, the notion of the triune brain the notion of my reptilian self uh, uh, um, somehow ha on top of this having my wonderful little limbic mammalian self and the whole thing being folded in by this crazed cortex that thinks it's in charge of everything and so one of the things so I'm actually vaguely fascinated with the heart thing like is my heart broken Wow, that's so fucking cool, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not cool, but 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 you know what I mean. Like, can like can I feel it? And and I'm pretty sure the one thing I am, ap yeah, I, the one thing I am sure of, and I'm not sure whether any of the people that I've been following have addressed, is that I'm not sure that your cortex can take you through the limbic, down through the reptilian, and in touch with yourself. I think it has to start with feeling. Now, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I don't know how you get to, I mean, just sort of say, now you ought to go out there and start feeling what you're really feeling. Or as, uh, what, what is it, the, 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 um, uh, the uh, nonviolent communication guy sort of says, what's alive in you? And, and it's, been, it's been, the last two years certainly have been much more questions saying, what's alive in me? 
you know, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so the, the thinking refers to the previous 12 years. Sorry. Okay, I'm John, you've obviously been doing a lot of thinking and a lot of feeling, yeah. as I'm sure all of us have, mm -hmm. um, since we've become really aware of all this. And um, I think you're aware of all the, the things we do at heart. We have this kind of twin focus. We are yeah. trying to inform local leaders, politicians, voluntary services, local community groups, yeah. about how dire it is, and also um, sort of fo focusing on sort of local community resilience, practically yeah. as well as all the inner work that um, Chantal and Kimberly do. Um, just from from your point of view, you know what really should be our key priorities. What what feels right to you from from what you know and what you you know you've been banging your head against brick wall. I'm sure, along the way, what do you think should be our, our our core priority? I think what you're doing. I think the hyper local is what it's all about, because it's a big system. I mean, I, I don't want to boast, but I have rubbed shoulders with presidents, with heads of commissions. I have set up corporate leaders groups. I have had cocktails with Prince Charles. I have, you know, I mean, you name it, I've done it because I, I, I've had the reputation of you know, doing these things, driving these things, that first uh, um, uh, sustainable development strategy. I put in the business angle there. I've set up, as I say, corporate leaders, business groups. I have... Uh, I have written legislation, uh, I've done, uh, and it's, it's curious, it's back to that kind of circular thing I was trying to identify at first, that, that you know, oh, this makes perfect sense, no, it doesn't, I, I forget what I was talking about, but the, the, the hyper-local, and I, mean, I do, I really do mean hyper-local, I almost mean, I almost mean more than, more than even, uh, I almost mean more local than even group, because Somebody like me, I, I, I find it incredibly difficult to think of any collective or group who would be able to put up with me for more than about three meetings, whereupon they'd say, just go away. So, so it's like I'm hugely aware again of the, of the contradiction of what I'm saying, but I think it's the hyper-locality. I, I mean, I, I was stunned again to read that you guys you know, let's get these little buildings and get people in, making clothes, learn how to cook, learn how to, wow. I mean, it's just, it's just fantastic. And it's the sort of, um, it's the sort of thing I, I, I think is, it, it's, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm embarrassed that you would ask me the, que the question. That's, that's how bad it is. Uh, I mean, you, you've seen me addressing the United Nations. Yes, you know, I mean, one of my best friends, our best friend is uh, Greta Thunberg's mother. You know, uh, I mean, we don't, okay, it, it, I, I mean, people always say, you know, I could get, you know, we could get you in, I have spent time in Downing, 10 Downing Street. I've re in, in the Blair era, the famous Den Eagle so much when this was first raised. Well, actually, I think, I think that the July bombings kind of screwed up the plan we had there. But, you know, all this big stuff, I, it's not where it's at. It. It's not coming it's, it's just not where it's at. I, 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 and I can't, I can't even really explain why, because it's not, it's not necessarily that people in positions of power are being um, evil, mendacious, or, 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 or um, uh, uh, I mean, when I look at the unfortunate Greta Thunberg coming over here, the bottom line is that the organization that's, that, that pays my salary and is near and dear to me lied th through their teeth to the unfortunate 16 year old. Yes, we're going to reduce our, our emissions by 50%. We actually mean based on 1990 figures and only those emissions that we currently count. You know, they're already down 34 in the areas we count. Why? Because we sent them all to China. But all the other things that we don't want to count, oh, well, we won't be counting airplanes. We won't be, and we won't be counting stuff that's built for us and brought back in again. In other words, embedded carbon or the imported carbon. And, and, and we only mean this and we only mean that. So, I mean, the, the system seems incapable of changing the system, which sort of makes sense. Einstein always talks about this, that it's not possible to solve a problem from within the same framework of thinking that created the problem. But how do you get outside the framework of thinking that created the problem? And that's the kind of thing that I think you guys are, are kind of on to, uh, you know, just sort of going, wow, you know, the place is going to collapse. What? <laughs> this is a little village in Hertfordshire. That's not going to collapse. Oh, no, it's all going to collapse. Why don't you come in and talk with us? And so I, I suspect you're a lot closer to having the answer than me, if that's not a cop out for an answer. Mm. 
but for you, it's kind of the things that we try and do, and, and yeah. you know, we're we're by no means as as illustrious as as you may think. I mean, we have small wins, but it's nowhere nowhere near. Um, yeah. uh, but in your view, this hyper local yeah. stuff yeah. is that to, as Jen Bendel would say, is that yeah. to simply extend the glide a little bit, reduce suffering? It's certainly not going to turn things around, is it? In your view? Well, I, I, I again, I, I yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, again, from, 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 from your other career, that a key to, to, to thinking, uh, right thinking, is not to be attached to what that outcome might be. Do the right thing. That's yeah. it. Just yeah. do the right. What will the result be? I have no idea. I mean, for example, I'm spending, I said, because I'm an engineer, I'm spending an inordinate amount of time with, uh, with, with, with a couple of um, um, really competent engineers working on future energy systems. Now, I have no idea. Now, our future, we, we think this is absolutely brilliant. You basically get electrolyzers, you stick them on the bottom of windmills and so on and so forth. You turn all spare power into hydrogen and you simply commandeer the existing gas networks across the European Union and the UK and you put hydrogen in there as a massive storage. And so, so, so it's, uh, we think this, we think this is so blindingly obvious. I mean, we're, we're getting a degree of support for it. And I'm working really hard again with some of the Irish people as well. Maybe Ireland might be a little island bobbing around that that might survive. Maybe Japan will, maybe the UK. But, you know, you, you do the right thing anyway. And I also like working with fellow engineers. It's been so long that I've been stuck in, uh, you know, you're, you're in a bureaucratic thing. So, so you kind of, uh, you kind of just... The, the, I remember watching this film, I think it was something called The Three Feathers or something, and some guy didn't want to go to war, and then he was, somebody threw feathers at him, so he had to go to war, and he goes wandering around Egypt and Africa and all sorts of places, and there's this weird, huge, big, powerful African man that keeps kind of saving their asses wherever they go, and kind of at the end of the, feet, the movie, he just kind of walks off, and thankfully, the, the main character runs after him and sort of says, why did you help us so much? And he sort of said, stupid question, God put you in my path. Period. <laughs> that was it. Lovely, lovely. It kind of made sense to me, you know. Yeah. But uh, uh, so, yeah. I mean, like how I, I, I was thinking again about things that could raise awareness. Like, um, so, in, in what you're doing, I, uh, I don't have one with me now. But I, I, I often when I'm talking to people now, I, I take a little caster with me off the bottom of one of our chairs. And um, I did, and I sort of say, look, when the heat bomb comes the next time in Brussels, all we need is an extra degree, and tens of thousand people in the old in the old people's homes will die, because we're, we were we were within one degree and twenty percentage points relative humidity back a couple of years of, of hitting wet bulb temperatures. I'm sort of saying something hyper local, really interesting to do. Where are the supermarkets? Where are the old people's homes? Can we talk to the supermarket owners and make sure we got casters to screw on the bottom of the fridges? When the shit hits the fan, can we shove the fridges up against the wall, bring the old ears across the uh, across the road, sit them down the aisles? Just and even if the heat bomb doesn't go away and they're going to die, at least we hold our hands. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. Um, now that that might sound like <laughs> like. Are you because I, I thought of this because one of my mates, the engineers, when, when we knew the, the last wet bulb was coming, and I suspect we'll get it this year again, he, he's, he's a brilliant chap, but he makes loads of money on, on stock markets because he sees things coming. So I was saying, John, why don't we just buy a shitload of, um, of, of cooling facilities because there's going to be uh, so many bodies to keep cool for the city of Brussels. Now, I decided. <laughs> I decided in all conscience not to do it, and, and he agreed not to do it too. But I tell you, you want to make a fortune this year, buy cooling facilities in Brussels, you know, or, or you know, in the southern, um, uh, not even the southern European. It looks like we're heading for for for, for an El Nino, so I'm expecting yeah. weather bombs, yeah. but you can't really expect them given what's happened in the jet stream. Right. So right. you can't expect. But the, this sort of preparation, I mean, doing something like that. That that could be fun, you know, getting people. Well, you know, do you have do you have an elderly person, a vulnerable person that you will look after? How will you look after them? How would you get them from A to B? I mean, may, may, maybe maybe running some a bit like Dad's Army type um, uh, invasion exercises. Like when it happens, this is what we'll do. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that 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 might be something else. Yeah. I mean, no, I love that. Uh, I love the casters thing. I've heard you speak about that before, and I stole it. Many years ago. Oh, did you? Oh, great! Thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Did you have a supplementary question, or is that 
Does that? Uh... Um, I, I think that was covered, but I, I just want to say at this point that we're lucky that our public health um, director of public health in Hertfordshire gets this. We tweet them sometimes and email them yeah, sometimes, yeah. and they do have sort of contingencies. So we'll just keep pushing in every time there's something a little bit higher than um, than they. I and I suppose the thing that uh, interests me from the point of view of getting your profile increased, why not get him to run? Why not get him to, uh, to do a dry run? I mean, that, that, that would be really interesting. Say, OK, let's, let's pick the 28th of April. We're going to say a heat bomb has settled over. And, you know, this, you know what do we do with the people? It would be really interesting to see if you could actually run some sort of contingency because uh, I think this is <clears throat> this is where um, this is where the power of, of what you do can, can can maybe get people aware because I mean you definitely get media. What are these people doing this for? Well, in cases of 38 38 degrees and 60 percent humidity for four days, you know, that's not going to happen. Well, we, when somebody else said we had 40 degrees down, and someone said we had humidity. Oh, this could be interesting because. Um, if you look back in last summer, the most developed economy the world has ever seen, the German economy, like 200 people died in floods. What? Floods in Germany? Are you kidding me? And, the, and some amazing things came out of that. Um, uh, a lot of the technology didn't work. So um, the warnings were there from, from our various satellite systems and were transferred to the regional people who being Germans, a lot of it was terribly efficient and people were kind of got messages. There is a dangerous weather event. Okay, you know, what do you do with a text? You know, I mean, do, yeah. But one, a, a weird thing that happened was in some of the villages where lives were saved, they had recourse only to Second World War air raid sirens. They worked. Yeah. Uh, so, Wow, is, is, is that something to learn from? And I don't know if we're saving people, if we're just adding a couple of weeks of life. Or, I don't know what we're doing, but it seems like the right thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to open it up. And uh, if the rest of you, if you have a question for John, just raise your hand um, or unmute yourself and, and ask it. Gosh, the time is flying by. Who has a question? Wonderful. I've answered everything anyone could possibly ever know. Yeah, um, you talk about your big grown up kids that come back yeah. home every now and then. Yeah, yeah. Do you, they're on the same page as you. Do you, yeah. talk, do you have these conversations? It's, it's, it's a little odd. I know it's been massively absorbed, but I almost never talk to them about it. Um, but um, there, there was a very interesting incident the other day in the house because the two boys, for reasons I will never understand, are into MMA, right? Uh, so one of them is, well, one of them is 24, the other is 22, you know? Uh, I think they're just a bunch of thugs. I think it's disgusting. But anyway, they're into MMA and Joe Rogan, right? Um, so Joe Rogan knows everything about everything. And then there's this other Canadian psychologist. What's his name? The real pain in the ass. Um, again, he's kind of right wing. Um, so he's gotten a lot of trouble with the so-called woke movement, but he is, he, he has some things to say to young men, but he's also a deeply unpleasant character. I can't remember his name, but Rogan interviewed him. And um, I saw very little of the interview other than the fact that um, I can't remember his name. It's probably a good thing I can't remember his name. So, so, and of course, these climate models are utterly ridiculous. You know, you can't get enough data points to be able to make any sort of prediction, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, fair enough. So, so they kind of diss the whole thing. They, they, uh, and Rui and Matthew, the next day, I came down and they were eating boiled eggs or something. And they sort of said, well, that's it. I'll never listen to that asshole again. Do you know what he said? I mean, how can anyone think that that's the way a climate model works? I mean, that's insane. I mean, how can you just... Turn... And I was so proud. Uh, you know, like, uh, because I've never actually sort of said, uh, lads, do you know what? Um, um, and um, the, the two girls are, are kind of hypersensitive. They're, they're very sensitized to it as well in their own way. So daughter number two is kind of an in-country director of, a, of an NGO in Honduras. And daughter number one um, uh, uh, works in retail here. But, but she's, she's, anyway, for, for various reasons, they're, they're quite, they're quite hyper aware, but it certainly hasn't been from me telling them anything. Uh, if anything, I'd say maybe my, 
maybe maybe my personal journey uh, you know has had more of an effect than any other because uh, um, you, you know you know the way they say you you can say what you like to kids but I mean they they actually watch what you do you know? yeah. so you're kind of screwed you know <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah that's 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 what I say yeah um, yeah thank you Stuart thanks John who else anything at all for John. Mm. Mm. Yes, Rose. I don't want to ask this because it sounds like it makes me feel really naive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, God somebody has the honesty to admit to that. <laughs> um, but right at the very beginning, you said, I think everyone will be dead in. And I didn't know whether you said 15 or 50. <laughs> Sadly, one five. I would consider 15. I thought that's what you said. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. You know, I, just been, I just think, you know, yeah. if I'm going to get my head around it, I may as well. Yeah, yeah, do you think so? Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fine well, if it was 50. Oh, yeah, fine. <laughs> limit my expectations a little bit. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, again, I, th I think it's a it's 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 really more a question of living with the doubt or the or, or the fear, um, because it, it, there's no smooth progression to this. I mean, from my point of view, if I just take two key indicators, um, uh, if, if we look at the levels of methane, particularly in the upper atmosphere, and we look at the amount of sea ice left in the Arctic, when, you know, when that sea ice goes, the simple loss of albedo uh, is effectively the same as adding as much, they used to say half as much, but as much CO2 as we have ever as a species put into the atmosphere. In the same way, what normally happens with methane is it is it degrades very, very quickly and it's OK, it's not an issue. But methane is now roughly speaking about 1,900 parts per billion, which is an almost two parts per million in the atmosphere and rising steadily at the moment. This is crazy. We've never seen this before. Two parts per million mightn't seem a lot, but over a, over a single year, it's 200 times the, um, the, the, the greenhouse warming potential of CO2. Uh, it's generally given as 180 over 10 years. So that's giving you the 420 parts per million carbon dioxide plus another 400 methane. That doesn't seem to be going away. It's steadily rising, suggesting that, that you know, the undersea methane and the, and the class rates and so on and so forth uh, are, are venting. And, and, um, as, uh, and, um, and, and, and then, as I say, add to that, the, the, the final disappearance of the sea ice or, or, and, and the browning of the snows in, you know, in Siberia and, and through northern Canada. Like, it's almost impossible to see how we don't get a sudden and dramatic jump. But when that will happen, I have no idea. It could be this September. But I'm, I'm, I am absolutely certain it'll be uh, that, that we have a dartboard with only 15 numbers on it, and it'll be one of those years, and it'll just go boom. Um, now, whether anyone crawls out of the far side of that, I have no idea. And, 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 and my, my, my skepticism there is that, generally speaking, you have one web of life, like this is life, as it is, you know, it's kind of messy, it kind of evolves, it kind of goes up and down, it changes a little bit relatively slowly. But I, I kind of call it the King Kong paradox. We never come across that island that was surrounded in mist that, oh, all the dinosaurs survived and giant big apes, you know, why did all the dinosaurs die out at the very southern tip of, of, of Latin America, for example, when the, you know, when, the, when the meteor that killed the dinosaurs and created the Gulf of Mexico struck so far north? Well, it's because it ripped the entire fabric of life apart. I mean, I can't cut your head off and expect your feet to do nicely. Um, so, so that's kind of where I'm coming from on, on that. I, I suspect that at some stage over the next 15 years, and quite brutally, it'll just go, holy shit, what happened? It's going to be 50 degrees here in the morning, or there's simply no food, or, or, what, or whatever it is. Like I say, I don't know. I'm certainly not God. I'm only speaking from the point of view of, 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 of having a, a reasonable scientific and engineering background and being able to do addition and, and look at the figures um, and, and, and hit the point where I can't deny it to myself. But that doesn't mean something weird doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I was joking on social media about you being charming, John. <laughs> you're, you're, and I think you are. And uh, 
but yeah, it's just the most charming. Sorry, it's that you know, it's the end of the world, but delivered in such a charming manner. That one, <laughs> one, one can't get offended. Uh, yes, Jane, Jane. Oh, I, well, you've nearly said what I wanted to say, really, was that I have enjoyed this talk so much and I've laughed quite a lot, probably more than I've laughed in the last few weeks. Well, um, that's, I, that's a result. <laughs> I, I also, right at the beginning, wondered whether you said 15 or 50. Yeah. Um, and I nearly put it in the chat and then I forgot all about it. And Great now move. the question has been asked mm. and and... I'm, I've been living in a world where I thought I've got no children and however much I want to um, try and change the world and cure all of this, I've kind of decided that my way is kind of to disappear into my garden and grow my own veg and Wonderful. my heart about it. Yeah. But I thought that I thought that I would be I would be gone before the end came. And now you have just told me that there's every chance that I won't. You get to be here. And I get to be here. And actually, that's in a way, because I'm not scared of dying. What I'm scared of is mm. growing old and mm. being in an old people's home with the smells of wee and boiled cabbage. <laughs> I just can't. I can't, you know. I'm not doing that. I'm not I, doing I'm that. I'm not doing that. I'm really not doing that. And so... Brilliant plans revolve around yeah. when they come to take me away and I've got my feet braced against the front door and yeah, I'm yeah. saying no never you will only get me out of here in a box yeah, yeah. Um, it's not going to happen yeah which actually is it's actually pretty yeah, good it's exciting. <laughs> it's quite well, exciting. I, I think I think you you definitely need to give people some motivational speeches on this because this is precisely it because you only ever live in this moment uh, and I think uh, I think you may have heard me say this before. Maybe Kimberly has. That um, actually, it, it sounds a little bit like Peanuts or Charlie Brown. But the, the, the notion that people sort of what what can we do about it? I said, well, nothing about it, which leaves everything else to do. So stop worrying about it. Like like like, what is it you want to do? You want to grow those carrots? You want to grow those beans? Have people around? Talk with people? Live fully and 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 hold. I mean, it's and I said I have no idea why I spend so much time trying to work on you know future energy solutions. I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe something weird happens, you know. Um, and and it's also it also opens strange opportunities. Um, like for example, um, uh, there's a lovely park near us here. Um. And um, there's two, there's two, <laughs> there's two old guys. I, I um, you know, they call them sans domicile fix, um, um, homeless people, um, uh, homeless guys. And they're a gay couple, the ugliest fucking old alcoholic guys you're ever gonna meet. And they live in a tent under a tree, right? And so <laughs> somehow the, 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 one of them was still getting his, his social security. And I, you know, at, at one stage, um, I, I got talking with the guy in the street. I said, oh, fuck, you know, bring me down. And, and, and so, uh, so you don't have this. Okay, everybody pile into the car. And the thing about homeless people is they stink, you know? And, uh, and so I was so thankful it was COVID times. I got to wear a mask. <laughs> which I would have had to do anyway. So I'm driving the guys around. I'm trying to sort out their medical stuff. I'm trying to sort out getting them out of the car. I'm trying to sort out get, and they're coming around. And when I'm not here, they're asking the kids for money. And the guys are saying, what the, my kids are saying, what the fuck are you doing with those guys? Those assholes. You know? and so, but it's, it's just kind of funny. Uh, and, and it's kind of so real. And I, I said, Yo, you, you, know, you should get yourself a job and start contributing to society. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think, why, why am I doing this? And uh, at the moment, it's really, it's, it's again, it's a thing that's kind of fascinating to me. There's all sorts of ways of looking after homeless people, right? So that I'm just discovering for myself now. And uh, so we had the guy, one of the guys in one of the agencies sort of around talking to us and he's saying, um, right, you know, um, the trouble is, um, uh, and I'm saying, I contribute to, to uh, uh, and they're sort of, uh, well, we can lodge them here for a little while, but how do you get them actually, uh, um, you know, together into an apartment? And no landlord is going to sign up for that. And I'm sort of saying, well, could we start something where, you know, people who have some money could at least be, um, could at least be the uh, guarantors? I mean, what's the worst damage they can do to it? 
kippy apartment. At least they'd be in, other, you know, I mean, a thousand euros, I can afford that. I'm a wealthy functionaire, you know. So so it's it's brought me to really odd and different places, you know. And um, I keep meeting the guys and now they come around kind of every day to plug in their electrical equipment. Or, you know, it's, it's, just, it's fairly nuts, you know. But um, what else would I do, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I was very struck by, I mean, Joanna Mace is always saying this, isn't she? Mm. This is actually a, uh, and I didn't see this at first, but I really do now. It's a yeah. privilege to be alive at this time. It, this epochal moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't always feel that way. No, no, but no. Yeah. No. yeah. No. But it's... I mean... Again, and I think the important thing, I mean, for me, you you guys have no idea how much energy I'll get from just from, from, from this talk. And you say, I'm, you know, you are not actually alone. There are actually sentient beings out there. Humanity is something that we can cry for. You know, we can actually say, wow, that's a real pity that that shit happened. You know, um, we don't have to listen to all the crap that's going on, you know. Uh, 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 yeah, it, it, it forces an encounter with yourself that you probably should always have been having. <laughs> if that, if that doesn't, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, like you, you, you can view things as the, the kind of the, the life going with death, the blah, blah, all, all that kind of stuff. You, you can view this as, okay, you really wouldn't listen. So here it is. Holy shit. And I, I, you know, I know, I know that's probably a lot of your work as a therapist as well. And, and Jay's nodding fiercely. I mean, you know, well, okay, you wouldn't listen. There you go. Um, you, you will eventually listen. This, this will happen and you will be listening. Yes. Lesson, lessons are repeated until they're learned. <laughs> yes. yes. Any other questions? We've just got a few minutes left. Yes, Mark. Mark, you're going to have to press a microphone button or something. Yeah, I've managed. Yeah. <laughs> I would just like to say that... Um, John's a very, op Jerry, John's very optim optimistic pessimist in, th in thinking that it's 15 years. Um, well, just, I, know, I said any time, any yeah, year, between from, could be then, September, yeah. pick a year, throw a dart yeah. the board. You know? mm -hmm. But I was just going to say, going back to what you were saying about it could be any day, yeah. this thing with your heart, it could be any day. I don't want yeah. to sound, you know, make you scared or anything. But, <laughs> um, and, when, and when you come to terms with that fact, if we mm. were all to come to terms with the fact that every day is the only day that we have, the here and now, yeah, yeah. Then if then it, even if it is seven years time, ten yeah. years time, fifteen years time, yeah. If you look at it that way, all of those years until the end, yeah. are bonus. They're a bonus. Absolutely. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, I remember when my um, when I passed 56, my father died at 56. And as yeah. somebody rem helpfully reminded me the other day, oh, yeah, that was a heart problem, wasn't it? I said, yeah, thanks, 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 pal. Um, but it's a, but he, he died at 56. And I remember when at my 56th birthday, telling my brothers who are both younger than me, don't the one of my sisters is older than me. I said, I'm older than the old fella. And we thought, wow. And one of my brothers said, it's all jam from here on in, man. It's <laughs> gravy. Yeah. Did it's all gravy, gravy man. <laughs> so, yeah, probably is. Probably yeah. always should have been gravy. Yeah. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pleasure talking to you. Yes. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. So, Ross. <laughs> Hello, John. Hey, um, how you doing, Ross? I'm very good, my friend. Um, a bit of a simplistic question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So Actually, you, can I ask you a question first? If ever I need to arrange my vinyls, would you come? <laughs> round? I'm just saying because I have. Not, that's fucking amazing. You should, and it, never mind. I, I would show you mine, but never mind. Bless yeah. you. Bless you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It keeps me occupied, you know. Just moving wow. the vinyl from the other side. I yeah. bet you can find anything. I bet if I said sort of dark side of the moon, you'd be able to just walk over and pick it out. Yeah, that's actually somewhere else. It's over there somewhere. Actually, but, yeah. oh. <laughs> that's, that's only a little bit of it. So it's more over there somewhere. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. John, they're they're actually arranged in height of artist. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kim. <laughs> yeah. Ross, Ross is my husband, by the way. Just to... <laughs> is he? Yeah. Yes, yes. The long suffering Ross. Oh. oh, that's me, my friend. That's oh, me. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, probably more the way around, I think. But never mind. <laughs> but um, okay, I'm going to ask this question. So you you obviously know about all the um, 
the technology that people keep talking about, yeah. you know, um, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, do you have any faith in any of it? None. The, there's a there's a slight difficulty most uh, technology technology oh, oh yeah, technophilia is, yeah. is it's kind of a belief system um and, and that's fine and it's been extremely useful to us but um the, 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 there's i mean i have just spotted my friend philip morta who's a who's a marvelous engineer just think from being a bit of a chancellor like like me is online but philip and myself did a lot of work a long time ago looking at the actual thermodynamic realities of you know how you would go about you know fixing something with technology mm. um and, and both of us very much inspired by a guy called garrett who who actually has done some uh, he was working out of i think the university of boulder in colorado who did a lot of work around the actual heat generated by civilizations and he was able to come up with a fantastically specific figure can't remember what it was it was something like 0.7 of a, a milliwatt i'm sure philip would probably post this in the chat uh, for, for every uh, 1990 us dollar of gdp growth so the the way work is done if it's not being done by an animal is you know some sort of chemical combustion or other process is happening that's producing useful work which has a technical definition and waste heat and in our case here in this system also co2 so yes you can you know you can build all sorts of machines to do stuff um but um we we ultimately reframed i, I like to think of it as the murta doyle restatement of the second law of thermodynamics and that restatement is you can't build a machine to clean up the mess you made making the machine yeah, a far yeah. better analogy is that famous pink panther cartoon where the pink panther goes around with a vacuum cleaner right and he kind of he's, woo, and he's hoovering everything up and then he, he doesn't like a picture on the wall woo, and he hoovers up the, the picture on the wall and then he hoovers up the fireplace and then he hoovers up the whole house and then the hoover swallows him and then the hoover swallows it, itself now yeah, okay. If, if you're of a technophilic disposition, that's fine. Um, and theoretically, because we don't have, our system is essentially closed on Earth. Now, it needn't be. And if we had done things very differently, for example, there's a, the, 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 there is an elim, unlimited amount of solar energy. But, but even then, we haven't got the smarts at the moment to harvest that in any way that would uh, uh, relieve us of the obligation of doing a massive amount of manufacture, which would be done necessarily with combustion. So if, if we were able to mass, the only thing I see, I was very optimistic in, in a sort of a, a mean way when COVID first struck, because um, had, had nature's gentle slap on the bottom been heeded, what we might have done was retreat massively as a species caring for one another in a much smaller space and just said, let that earth do what it needs to do. I grow my carrots and my beans and I keep myself going, right? But, but I let it do what it's doing because we don't have the smarts to know what to do. Just, just leave it alone. And I thought COVID might do that because it looked as if it would be able to hang around in aircraft holes for, you know, more than 38 hours and survive. The, but it didn't. You know, the whole thing now is let's get back. Let's get things back the way we were and we'll solve all the problems that the world has. But basically, we, is, we need to return a massive amount of this planet to the planet so that it can stabilize where it's at. Because the planet actually doesn't really care that much. You know, a, a, a very you know a complex uh, bio uh, uh, system like this will happily enough stay in a state of kind of dynamic equilibrium until it's pushed out of it. But for a long time, it'll try to get back there because that's just the way the systems work. Now, we don't have the smarts to manage that. Our, as I said, the, the, the neocortex to me is the thing that causes us so much trouble because it reduces everything to kind of words, figures, which we cheat with. We yeah. cheat ourselves with them. Um, it's, it's quite incredible. We can absolutely prove to ourselves that what we're doing is absolutely wonderful, knowing full well that it's completely wrong. Um, uh, which is not to say I wish we didn't have it, but it's just well, it needs yeah. to have its place. Right. So 
you know, anybody who spends a little time with, well, certainly with Philip Murta or anybody who understands thermodynamics would go, you're fucking crazy, mate, you know? Now, uh, I'd say, I, the last talk I did was with a guy called Lei Tao, I think, and I think Beryl is on. And, you know, they, 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 there's a degree of faith there in the kind of mere reflection project. But yeah, again, even that. these, yeah, but, but everybody involved in that will also say the same thing. Yes, if we did this and, 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 well, where do all the ands come from, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, so that's that. That's kind of the one that stymies you or snookers you there. All right. Thank you, hey. Ross. Thank Thanks, you. Cheers, Ross. Thank you. Ah, so, <clears throat> gosh, we could go on and on, but thank you all so much, and thank you, John, hugely. Uh, what could I ask that maybe we do it again, maybe in six months, yeah. we'll have another chat, just for the hell of it, you know, even if we have nothing to say, you're such a wonderful bunch I of people. Can't, and... I can't imagine that being the case, but yeah, I'd love to, would love to. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I'm going to send you um, a couple of things from us uh, that we've done recently. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, it's just been terrific. Thank you so much. And Jane's saying, yes, please. <laughs> Another I can't thank you enough. You're the most beautiful bunch of people I've met in a long time. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm genuinely touched. And um, thank you. Thanks, John. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Kimberly.